Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Brittany and I have a lot of fun exploring the tools and systems marketed to photographers and creative small business owners. I find interesting tech, do some investigating, and report back with what I find. If that sounds like your kind of thing, I hope you'll consider subscribing. Today, I'm exploring Nearapix's culling tool. For anyone who might not be familiar, Nearapix is a company best known for their AI editing plugin for Lightroom. I've looked at their smart preset plugin in the past and I really enjoyed it a lot. So when I saw their email about their color being live, I knew I wanted to try it and that I needed to try it immediately. It's currently free, easy to update, and marketed as a way to make image selection more efficient than ever. Nearpix describes their culling tool, which is currently in beta, as offering several AI-powered features, such as grouped views plus facial recognition with more coming soon. That sounded familiar enough to me, kind of like a lightweight version of the other AI colors I've tested, so I selected 370 unculled images from a wedding. These images range from different parts of the day, like portraits, groups, and detail shots. And I'll just admit it now and elaborate later, what I thought I was about to test and what I actually ended up testing were two pretty different things. This isn't going to be an extensive walkthrough. Instead, I'm breaking this tool down into three core areas I think are important to look at. First is the features and functionality, what this tool actually does right now, and how the AI-powered features work. Then we'll move to the workflow and speed of using the tool. And lastly is the usability and how this culling method lines up with the way I, and maybe you, actually work. This video is really about figuring out what's here, what's actually helpful, and who this might be a good fit for. Everything I'm sharing today is based on my experience using the Neuropix Culling Beta. You might try it out and have a totally different experience, and honestly, that's great. I always encourage folks to test things for themselves because what works for me might not work for you and vice versa. If you do give it a shot, keep in mind this is still in beta. Things are likely to shift as they refine it for full release. I'm doing my best to stay curious, not overly judgy, and just take it for what it is right now, an experiment in progress. And hey, if you have already used it or plan to test it out, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear how it worked for you and if you're excited to test it out. All right, I think we're ready to jump in and start chatting about the features and functionality. So. What does this culling tool actually do? And what does AI powered features mean in practice? Because going in, I expected something much closer to the automated colors I've tested before. Turns out I was a little off. Once I imported my images into Lightroom and launched the plugin, I ran through the quick tutorial and poked around the interface. There aren't many settings, just a few layout tweaks and options for how our selections get marked in Lightroom. Honestly, the hardest part was choosing the color label that I wanted to use for my selections. After that, I kind of sat there waiting for something to happen. Lightroom was still processing in the background, so I thought maybe there was something I needed to wait for to finish. But that's not the case. Lightroom was just generating previews. That's when it fully clicked what Neuropix meant by AI-powered features. It's not a tool that picks your best shots for you. It's one that analyzes your images to help you decide. Neuropix's culling focuses on analysis, not automation. If we want to pick images, we do that manually, either by left clicking or tapping the hotkey shown in the top left corner of each thumbnail. Once we've made our selections, they're reflected back into Lightroom. What the smart color does handle is grouping similar shots into what it calls bursts. Basically, images taken back to back. It also detects faces, and there's an optional overlay that places a red box around each detected face. That's especially helpful for group shots, though I did notice it occasionally misses a few faces in extra large groups. From there, the system evaluates whether people are smiling, looking at the camera, or have their eyes open. Those face-based stats show up as small icons in the bottom corner of each image. If no faces are detected, the icon stays gray, but when faces are found, the icons fill with green to represent how well the image meets the AI's criteria. The more people looking at the camera, 
smiling, or keeping their eyes open, the more filled the icon is. If someone has their eyes closed or isn't smiling, that particular icon won't be as full. Hovering over the icons give a simple description, eyes open, smiling, looking at camera, nothing overly technical there, but that's about it. The icons aren't clickable and there's no context that tells us how many people aren't looking or which face triggered the dip in the bucket of fullness. Since this is still in beta, I totally get that we're in the early stages of what Mirapix is calling might grow into. And I'm excited to see the changes that they might implement, especially with these face-based stats. I'm hoping in the future that they can make them a little more informative. Like if I hover over the eyes open icon and it told me that one out of five people had their eyes closed, or better yet, popped up a small face preview showing who the AI flagged, that would make it much easier to verify what that stat is trying to say. In images with one or two people, these icons already feel really intuitive. If someone isn't looking at the camera, the icon is about half full and it's easy to spot what's going on. But once we start working with larger groups, things get a little trickier. We're told something might be off, but not necessarily what or who. There were a few moments where I noticed the icon had a slight dip in the green, but when I checked the image, I couldn't really pinpoint the issue that's why I think there's some exciting potential here. Even something small like changing the icon color to yellow when more than half of the faces don't meet a specific stat could help draw our attention in a more intentional way. Of course, not every photo is supposed to have people smiling or looking at the camera, but that extra layer of visual feedback might actually help us pause and consider, is this moment exactly what I intended? Or is it one that I might skip over? It could be a subtle but powerful way to bridge intention and selection. So while the Neuropix color isn't exactly doing the culling for us, it is making the process a bit easier. It helps visually sort similar shots, spot outliers, and support quicker comparisons. It's not as hands-off as some of the AI colors out there, and honestly, that makes me like it even more. I'm still a little iffy on full automation, and the time it takes to double check and correct picks those tools might make. Mirapix gives us a helpful assistant in the analysis, but ultimately leaves the decision making to us. It kind of lives in the comfortable middle space of smartish, still manual, and packed with future potential. And while the features themselves are pretty minimal at the moment and easy to understand, the real question for me is how does this actually feel to use in a real workflow? Because a tool can be simple and even helpful, but if it slows us down or doesn't fit how we work, that changes things. One of the biggest things that stood out to me is how much this setup shifts the flow of fast paced culling, especially when working with a high volume of images. To use Neuropix's color we have to import all of our RAWs into Lightroom first. And depending on the type of session it is, that step alone can be a big ask, which is part of the reason that I settled on a smaller amount of images for this trial run. Once we're in the culling interface, navigation feels a bit rigid since we view our images page by page. Personally, I would have much preferred a single page that I can use my mouse wheel to scroll through and then activate the smart zoom in some other way, such as a control mouse wheel combo or something else entirely. To be fair, the smart zoom is fantastic. It's fast, responsive, and great for checking sharpness between similar images. But having to arrow through page after page to make comparisons, especially when some similar shots are split across different pages, disrupts my culling rhythm. For example, this collection of ring shots don't all appear on the same page, so when wanting to compare them, I'd zoom into one image, flip to the next page to do zoom checks on the rest of the images, then come back to the other page and see that the zoom has reset. It gets tedious, especially when trying to make quick, confident decisions. I did eventually find some sort of flow in my picking, but it was easy to break if I tapped the wrong hotkey or arrowed through pages too fast. 
Not sure if this is a tip or a PSA, but wanted to mention it. If the culling interface is closed, reopening it means going through the plugin menu again and waiting for the previews to load along with our previous selections. While it's loading, it does look like our selections were wiped, but they are not. They are there, it just takes a minute. I had a brief moment of panic the first time I did it since my selections took some time to populate, but I also had the loudest sigh of relief once I finally saw my picks load in. Overall, it's not necessarily a slow workflow, but it's definitely not frictionless either. And depending on how you like to move through your selections, the way this beta functions at the moment might give you some pause. And that's kind of exactly what made me realize that it's not just about the speed of using the tool, it's also about how it fits into my process. Because even if something technically works, that doesn't mean that it's going to work for me or anyone else. So I started asking, who is this actually for? And what kind of photographer might find this tool helpful? So if I think about who this tool is actually for, I don't think I'm the target user right now. My main business was shooting high volume events. After a wedding, my husband and I would usually be looking at 6,000 images across our memory cards. And the idea of importing all of them into Lightroom, bloating up a catalog, culling them, then trying to remember to remove the unpicked photos later, generally gives me walking or I guess it would be sitting at my computer nightmares. But hey, if calling in Lightroom is already part of your workflow, that is awesome. And honestly, please drop your Lightroom settings in the comments because I've tried every optimization I can think of and it still runs clunky for me. I can absolutely see this Neuropix culling beta being a great fit for those who already use Lightroom to manage smaller sessions, like portraits, branding shoots, headshots, etc. And who just want something quick and lightweight to help visually sort through their images. It's also a nice option for folks who want a more packaged all-in-one workflow with an affordable price tag in an application they already use. With this release, we can call our images, select our picks, and then immediately run a Neuropix smart preset, all within the familiar Lightroom interface. It's streamlined and easy, and that's genuinely nice when you want to move from selection to edit without exporting and importing across multiple tools. Neuropix's AI editing integration is already a strong workflow enhancer for Lightroom users, and now there's a beta culling tool that builds on that same ecosystem. In that context, this plugin makes sense. It's a convenient, low friction add-on for photographers already using Lightroom and smart presets. And I can absolutely see the appeal for that kind of setup. And of course, as I've said, I'm sure an obnoxious amount of times in this video, this is still in beta, so I'm keeping that in mind. What's here now is a solid foundation, and if Neuropix continues to evolve the tool, especially around navigation and handling large image sets, it could grow into something really versatile and powerful. So overall, I found Neuropix's culling tool to be simple, functional, and a great companion to their editing system. It's not a perfect fit for my workflow, but I can see how it might be helpful for photographers working on smaller sessions or for those that already use Lightroom for culling. And since it's still in beta, I'm really curious to see where they take the AI-powered features next. I'd love to hear from you though. If you've tried it or you're thinking about trying it, how are you liking it or how do you think that you'll like it? Drop a comment and let me know if this is something that could fit into your workflow or if you're sticking to your current system for now. I'll be keeping my eye on Neuropix and any more features and updates that they might have up their sleeve. I really like this brand and the different path they chose for their AI ventures. So I know whatever they have coming out next will be innovative. Thanks so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like what we chatted about today, let me know by liking, subscribing, and hitting that little bell so you can be alerted whenever I release a new video. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next one.